Say church for me. Church. Mississippi. Mississippi. <laughs> and open. I feel like there's so many other words you could say. No, Mississippi's a good one. <laughs> So three years ago I was a student in the Denturism program at uh, George Brown College in Toronto. Each year they take a student or two um, with an organization called Nine Miles of Smiles. They do a missionary trip down to Jamaica. They go down for about 10 days and while they're there they uh, create dentures, they clean teeth, they pull teeth, do everything from every different dental field. What happened was I took impressions, uh, did insertions, bites, trines, all the denture related activity. Uh, it was uh, an incredible experience, especially as a student, because we ended up doing more work in those 10 days than I had done in almost the three years of, uh, of participating in, in George Brown at, at the college there. You deal with a lot of different stuff and people that haven't been without teeth for 30, 40 years and how appreciative and grateful they are to have us come down. We do it all non-for-profit um, and at, at no cost to the patients. It's one of the better feelings in the world, especially because you're giving back so much and, uh, and you can really see the difference. And it's, it's a sort of a tangible change that you're making right then and there. You're changing somebody's appearance, you're changing somebody's smile. And a lot of times you're giving them confidence and the ability they need to go out and achieve their own goals. A couple years has gone by and I've really sort of fallen into a groove and, it, and it's worked out really nice. And that's what sort of gave me the idea. Um, that now I have the ability and a little bit of time on my hands to reach out to, uh, to the Nine Miles of Smiles organization and uh, just informed them that I had a wonderful experience the first time and I was, uh, I was hoping maybe I could go back and come, come down as a professional and really help now that I've got a little bit more experience under my belt. Tim had come three years ago as a student here at George Brown and he had an amazing experience as a student and it was I'm sure even more amazing for him this time to come as a professional with three years of practice under his belt and be able to share what he's learned with the students who went this year and to help the people in Jamaica even more than he did the first time by being able to tackle more difficult uh, uh, treatments and work with the patients in a very professional manner. So we flew into Montego Bay, then got a, a big shuttle bus, drove about an hour inland to Ocho Rios. We stayed in a villa with our group of about 25 of us. Uh, to get to the clinic, we then had to drive about an hour further inland to uh, St. Anne's Parish. The clinic that we worked out of is actually a jerk spice factory. And what happens is we sort of transform a space into the clinic. When we go down there, we do with what we can. What I mean by that is we don't have all of our materials and tools and instruments that we might hear at home. Down there, we were fighting for table space. So we're using big barrels that we strapped a piece of plywood on top and it's maybe a quarter of the size that you're used to. And you've got to use all your tools that you've sort of brought down and, uh, and you're really cramped for space, of course, but you make do. One of the biggest struggles we had this year, we didn't have access to any running water. So what we ended up having to do was take a big uh, five gallon pail, screw a spigot in there, constantly fill it up with a garden hose, and then sort of use that as our, as our water. The, the trimming lathe was starting to go, but we, we, we needed that one. So in order to keep it going, what we ended up doing every time, you had to give it a nice pump with your fist in order to catch it up to speed so that it was fast enough. To, uh, to, to really get the speed to, to do the job that it was supposed to do. So it's a whole bunch of little things like that. And they're not necessarily problems, but just obstacles that you need to find solutions for because there's nothing else. You, you really develop the problem solving sort of skills and in the moment, because you, you only have that time, if you don't fix it now, you can't fix it for the patient or, or complete as much work as you were hoping to do. So while we're down there, we don't have the ability to finish and complete every case in that week. 
What we specialize are one or two tooth flippers, they're called, where we replace sort of essential teeth that help people smile and, and eat and, and essentially get a job. But the cases where the patients are missing all the teeth in their mouth, we don't have the ability, resources, or time to do that all in the week. So we start the process and then the cases are brought home. The students at George Brown finish them and then the following year, we bring the cases down. That means that we see the patients uh, for impressions and to figure out how their jaw comes together, pick the color that we're gonna think, and then they have to wait an entire year and we bring them back. So each year it's a combination of cases that you finish down there, cases that you start, and then cases that you bring from the year previous. This year we had a, a really uh, extraordinary case where most people are lined up day one because they've been waiting a year, they're so excited, they're anxious. But there was a couple of patients that weren't there. We figured all those out, but there was still one that we hadn't got a hold of. Unfortunately, what had happened over the year is he had become bedridden. Um, he didn't have the ability to come to the clinic like he did the year before, and he was stuck in his home, but we still had these finished dentures that were ready for him. He was still quite healthy, just stuck in his home. So what had happened, his wife had came to the clinic, explained this to us, we found his name, found his chart, and uh, I was the, the fortunate one who got the ability to walk sort of across Jamaica with her and, uh, and see him at his house. It took us maybe half an hour to get him out of bed, to pop him up in chair. And of course, when you're in someone's living room, you don't have the tools even close that we had at the clinic. So I brought uh, a handpiece with me and we got a bowl of water and we tried our best as we inserted the new dentures. They ended up being fantastic. Uh, the students from the year before must have done a really good job. We only had to do a few little minor adjustments and by the end he was biting, smiling and, uh, and, and hopefully having a, a much easier time uh, eating and chewing his food. Give us a nice smile here. Give me a big smile. What am I going to do? Take the neck go on. I'm hoping to make it an annual thing as long as uh, I have the ability to go down. I think it's a great experience. It's only a couple weeks, so it's it's not detrimental to my clinic here, and you end up uh, you end up getting to do a lot of good and also respect your your own profession in a whole different light. So I uh, I'm hoping to uh, to make it uh, an annual event, and they're hoping to continue uh, to continue it as well. The organization has been going on for about 20 years now, and I'm uh, it's only getting more and more popular.